Hi everyone and welcome to Metasoft Training with Cheryl. Today I'm going to show you how to enter in a new patient and create a new case. So the first thing we want to do is open our Metasoft and there's two ways you can actually do this. You actually can open it up to your patient list then enter in five patients and then go back in and enter their case which is a two-step process or we can do it all from one screen. So I'm going to show you how to enter a create a new patient and a new case from your transaction screen. So you can either click this icon or you can go to activities, enter transactions. So once the transaction entry window opens, we want to come to chart and we're going to right click and we're going to do new patient or F8. And then your new patient screen is going to open. We're going to leave the chart number blank and let the system create it. And the way that the system creates it is just how you're taught in school. It's the first three of the last name, first two of the first name, and then it has numbers. So we're going to create our patient and we're going to call this one Suzanne Smith. And Suzanne does not have a middle name, so we're not going to put anything there. And we're going to create her street address. And she lives at 1245 Johnson Avenue. And then we're going to come down to our city and our zip code. And we're going to make her city. And you see it populates by itself once you put in the zip code. And we want to make sure that we have her email address and her phone. It's always good to get someone's email address because you never know when you may need to send them an email regarding an appointment. But you want to make sure you have a form that says that they allow you to actually do that. So her email address is ss at gmail.com, which that makes it very simple for us. And then we're going to enter in a phone number. And she doesn't want to give us her work or sale number, so we're not going to list that. We're going to go in and put in her birth date. Female. We don't need the birth weight. We're going to enter in a social. Okay, um, you do not have to put an ethnicity, but if you want or you need it for certain um, reasons, you can. We want to put in our language just in case so we'll know um, in advance and we're going to say that she is um, Asian. We're going to do that. And then we want to go to our tab that says other information. Now, the only thing you need to make sure you have another information is if it's the patient, make sure the patient is here. Or if it's the guarantor, like a child, this is the mother of a child, you do have to enter guarantors in even if they're not going to be seen by the provider. Because the insurance is under that guarantor, you need to have the guarantor on there or you'll have your insurance, your claim denied because you do not have the guarantor listed. So if this is not something that you have listed on your patient information sheets, you might want to add that space in or ask the actual patient while they're there and type it in. So we're going to make sure that we have type as patient. Choose our assigned provider, and you should have providers already entered into your system. If not, please go back and look at my video of how to add a provider. Um, the patient ID, the patient bill of code, patient indicator, flag, and healthcare ID are all um, fields that are used for that particular office. There's nothing that will go on to claim from those fields. So, for an example, if you have a different ID system, uh, say the system is doing it by... Um, alphanumeric but in your office you only use numbers so instead of creating a whole new filing system you can put in that second um, identification number that you use actually in the office so that you can match it up with the patient's file electronically um, the patient billing codes is set up again for your office so say you have billing code a is for everyone that we see on monday wednesday and fridays and their cash patients and then on tuesday and thursday patient bill of code b are everyone who we see that are medicaid at our our secondary location so you can just put group patients by a certain code um the patient indicator and then the flag um you can also label those and these are your options for patient indicate i mean for flags if it's a copay due so you'll see this in the transaction screen if this patient is delinquent on um actual any money at all and it'll say well copay due so next time she comes in we know that she owes us for the copay you do want to make sure you have the signature on file box checked you do not have to put a date in but you do need to have it actual checked so the main fields that need to and must be filled out on this is the type the assigned provider and the signature on the file everything else is for internal offices purposes only the payment plan and the custom tabs are all tabs that were added 
Um, these are not tabs that are usually come as defaulted with Metasoft. Um, we can create custom tabs or your vendor can create custom tabs. There are certain extra additional things that you would like. For example, visit date, hide and wait. You want to put that in Metasoft, then you can ask your vendor, your Metasoft vendor to create that tab for you. And then the payment plan, um, those, these three tabs, name, address, other information, and payment plan are default tabs that come with Metasoft. You can hide them or not view them, but this is if you had your patient set up on an actual payment plan. So once we've done the three main tabs, we want to click save. And then now you see she fills in the box and it, we've created a file, a chart for her. And you see she's in highlighted in pink because we selected that she has a copay due. So we want to come to case and we're going to go right click case, new case or F8 again. Here's where we're going to put in all our insurance information. So we're going to say that she's coming in for an office visit. And then we're going to go to our, and as you notice that she's the guarantor, so she fills out. We want a patient statement. If she was a cash case and had no insurance, we want to make sure this is checked. The employment, it is optional for you to put that there, but if that is something that you want to have down for records, like if you ever have to call her at work or if she has a balance that you want to contact her at work, then it's good to have that information there. For the account tab, you see that the assigned provider has already come over. And then for the facility, you would only choose the facility if it's different from where you actually render services. So in this case, it is the same location, so I do not need to fill this in. The case billing code, the price code, again, those are internal. If you had a treatment authorization number for that patient coming in, this will be the actual tab that you will put that in. You will list the authorization number, how many visits, and then how long is it authorized through. The diagnosis codes, if we know it already, we would actually put this in. Sometimes there's two different people who enters in the case information versus the patient information. So you may already have the diagnosis codes. By putting the diagnosis code here, it'll automatically populate in your transaction screen. If you do not put it here, you would have to manually choose a drop down and choose it from your transaction screen. This EDI report at the bottom allows you to send attachments if you had to scan an attachment and assign an attachment number to it. And then the policy one tab is where you actually put the insurance. And for this case, the patient actually has Aetna. And then we're going to pull in the policy number. There is no group number, but we do want to make sure we have assignment of benefits and accept assignment checked. And we want to also put in the copayment if the patient actually has a copayment. So every time the patient comes in, we'll know to actually um, collect that. And then our treatment authorization number goes here. The insurance coverage is defaulted. Um, typically, most insurances are 80 um, 80, 20 plans. If there is a 70, 30 plan, then you want to come down here and choose, fix that in the, uh, the A box if they actually had more um, payers. The patient does not have a policy two or policy three. The condition tab does not apply because this was not a um, pregnancy or a workers comp or um, a U UBO4. And a lot of these fields you can hide if there's not something that your office typically deals with. Um, on the miscellaneous tab is if you had outside lab work, you can put in charges for that. This local use A or B, and if you scroll over, it actually tells you that they, that's a certain fill on your box, I mean, on your claim form, if you needed to add additional information. The Medicaid and TRICARE, she does not have Medicaid or TRICARE, so I would not have to complete these screens. And then the comment tab is where you can put notes or if she had allergies. If you needed to add additional information, on the actual EDI claim versus sending a whole bunch of documents, you can click add additional information, type in what the insurance was needed and resend the claim if that was the case. In the comment box, you can type notes for yourself and it'll pop up when you actually enter that patient. But again, this is internal, nothing that will go on the claim as far as the comment. The EDI tab, if this was a home health vision plan, then we would need to fill out this data if the clear number was needed. And then the custom one is a custom tab that was created. So once we've entered in all the tabs that we needed for this patient, we're going to click save. If you need to print out a face sheet, you can from this screen as well. So we have all our information. You see it here. You see that 22 was assigned. We see our Aetna here. We see the patient has a copay and there's no money due as of now. Now we're going to put in our transactions. So this is the way that I would suggest entering, uh, creating a new patient and creating a case from the transaction screen because it brings you back to the transaction screen and then you can go on and fin finish entering in your charges from this point without having to go two to three steps. So I'll stop right here. Please check me out in my next video when I show you how to actually enter in transactions. Thanks.